Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Ted Kafalis, the Director of Strategic Campaigns for the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. And I'll be standing in today for our regular host, Dr. Kelii Akina. Today's topic is Maui's new water bureaucracy. Our guest is Eva Blumenstein, Planning Program Manager at the Maui County Water Department. Eva is here today to help us understand the new designation by the state to oversee the water on West Maui and how this might impact the local residents. Thank you for being with us today, Eva. We look forward to learning a lot about the water issue on Maui. Aloha, thanks for having me. Now, before we get in, into uh, talking about this, you mind going into depth about your background and, and kind of telling us, you know, how long you've worked for the, the Maui Water Department? Sure. Um, my background is in uh, environmental studies and law. Um, before I came to the Water Department, I worked briefly for a law firm that litigated uh, groundwater contamination cases and specifically pesticide contamination of wells in Maui. I've uh, been with the department for 20 years, or over 20 years, and um, in this capacity as a planning chief for the last seven years. Oh, wow. So you're, you're certainly qualified to talk about this. And, you know, you mentioned that you work at the Maui County Water Department, but, you know, there's a different and separate entity at the state level called the, the State Commission on Water Resource Management. Uh, some people might know it as CWARM. Um, could you kind of tell us what the differences are between those two agencies? You know, a lot of people think that because they deal with water that, that you guys do a lot of the same things. Right. Um, yeah, so Sea Worm is a state agency under the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And they administer and implement the state water code. So they have very broad responsibilities managing water resources throughout the state. Um, as all waters in the state are held in trust for the benefit of our citizens. So all permits related to groundwater development or surface water diversions are administered by Sea Worm. We, the Department of Water Supply, we're a county agency. Uh, we manage and operate all water systems owned by the county. But we are uh, also tasked by the county charter to protect and manage water resources in the county, um, especially identifying what water resources are available for current and future use. And we also have to implement the county's land use plans, yeah, such as the general plan and the community plans. Sure, that's certainly an important job. You know, as, we, uh, as, as we've seen in the news recently, uh, a sea worm, I believe, has recently designated West Maui as a surface water and groundwater management area. And I think a lot of people are confused about that and, and really what that means. And so could you kind of help us unpack that and, and kind of understand what exactly that designation will mean? Um, so designation means that the state takes administrative control over all withdrawals of water in that area, public and private. So that should happen when Seaworm determines that water resources in a specific area are threatened and um, with the objective to ensure that there's a reasonable beneficial use of the water resources in the, in the public interest. So the state water code defines um, specific criteria that must be met to designate, such as where the water quality is threatened, water levels um, in aquifers are declining, or um, water used or projected to be used, it goes beyond 90% um, of the sustainable yield or the, the max sustainable rate that can be withdrawn from an aquifer. Um, of there, there may be serious disputes or excessive waste occurring, et cetera. So for surface water, the triggers are a bit different. And once an area is designated, uh, each water purveyor, whether that's the municipal or agricultural or commercial, uh, have to apply for a water use permit for their existing use. And those permits are subject to um, different conditions that are set, for, set forth in the state water code. And then permits for new uses, um, such as wells that are not yet in production, are considered after the existing uses uh, in that area have been addressed. So each permit application um, is subject to comments and objections by any person with property interest or, or actually any interested person. Um, and if there are no objections filed, then the commission, the appointed water commission, uh, can proceed to approve or reject that water use permit application. And, and every sure. water use permit application that the department has filed has been objected to by some party. 
And often there's oh. um, a petition for a contested case as well. But, you know. Oh, wow, that's very interesting. You, you said every case has been contested? Um, every what is permit application we have filed has been objected to. Oh, wow. Very interesting. And now, you know, just talking about the sea worm designation and and uh, applications, but but how does this affect the average resident on Maui? Is there something that you know we're going to see as an as the average person that's going to see uh, you know a big change because Maui has West Maui has been uh, designated as this uh, surface water or groundwater management area. Well, I guess it depends on to some extent where you're getting your water from. Um, so in in sea worms uh, opinion now, uh, the current withdrawals are already exceeding available supply from at least two of these individual um, aquifers, groundwater systems. So um, certain uses may have to be reduced or find alternative supply. So when, when there's a competing there's competing needs and if there's insufficient supply, um, domestic uses or thought about like general household use is one of the protected classes, so public trust use. So the, the average person will unlikely have their service interrupted. Yeah, but we are already asking West Maui customers to conserve water. And I would expect um, other like, private purveyors to do the same and probably issue mandatory conservation measures if there is um, insufficient supply for, for existing customers. Absolutely. Now, with this new designation, does it make it does, does it make it any more difficult or, or does it uh, change how we find new sources of water? Obviously, uh, you know, water on Maui in particular is, is a very valuable resource. Um, well, so for the water department, we have already budgeted and begun development of new source in three of the aquifers in West Maui. Um, it takes a long time to get from hydrologic study to site selection, landowner negotiations, engineering report, environmental assessment, state historic preservation district review, et cetera, et cetera. So designation adds another layer with an additional permit and analysis required. That is that what is permit application and a, what's called a kapa'akai analysis. And that goes in front of the commission um, and it requires that that use can be accommodated from the available resource. So if we are now in Seaworm's opinion exceeding available supply already, it doesn't seem likely that additional source can be, can be accommodated, right? And, and the other thing is um, the length of time for Seaworm to approve what is permits for all existing uses is, is problematic because um, permits for new wells are delayed until the existing wells have been processed. And there are at least, I think it's like 80 existing wells in West Maui. So maybe 60 or so of those are um, production wells that needs to be processed. So uh, I don't think CWM has the sufficient staff to deal with this enormous new management area for all the surface water and groundwater in West Maui on top sure. of their responsibilities elsewhere. Sure, and those, those 60 wells, I mean, how long does that typically take for them to process? I mean, you know, in, in previous years? Um, well, I mean, it, it depends, yeah, but we are still waiting for our new water use permit for the EL water treatment facility that we submitted in 2009 for the EL uh, in uh, Nabaeha and uh, Wailuku Aquifer Sector Area. Wow. So it will be years, I'm sure. Sure, sure, absolutely. You know, and, and I mentioned earlier that water is such a valuable resource, but and I think you had touched on this a little bit in some of your responses, but is there technically enough water on West Maui to meet the needs of, of residents of the area today? And, you know, what are the area's future needs as we look at, at kind of the water situation and what can we do to, to mitigate that? Um, well, so, yeah, so Water Department didn't really agree with Seaworm's determination that current and future water needs exceed supply in several of the aquifer systems. So um, we know actual like 2021 groundwater withdrawals is um, maybe 25% of sustainable yield. Sustainable yield is 34 million gallons a day for that whole aquifer sector, for the whole region. Um, there's definitely potential underreported wells, but uh, I know that all the large purveyors support their water use. So sure, sure. Um, we know um, 
it's important to understand that sustainable yield is not all the available groundwater. Yeah, it's a fraction thereof. So it's a percentage of total recharge, and that depends then um, on the initial water level or, or head. So for, for West Maui, sustainable yield is generally 44% of recharge, meaning that that remaining 56% groundwater flowing Maka to Makai uh, is allowed to reach near shore waters, yeah. And then sustainable okay. yield is also set at the lowest end of a calculated range. So for example, for Lanya Poco Aquifer, that range is seven to 18 million gallons a day, but then sustainable yield is set at seven at the lowest range. So, so there is sufficient aquifer yield within the region as a whole um, that in combination with surface water and recycled water could support plant housing if allocated um, in a sustainable manner. Sure. And, and, you know, with the county, it seems like that you guys already kind of have a plan for, for this water development in Maui. Yeah, we do. Uh, so, you know, why is the state designation needed, if at all? And, and if you guys, if you could maybe go into to some of the county's plan that, that you guys have and how it differs from the state. Um, yeah, so, so how to allocate water resource to land use is required by the state water code to be determined in the water use and development plan. So that's the plan. Um, the county is required to prepare this plan for all uh, water resources within the county, whether that's they're used by county or private systems. So the plan allocates the most appropriate resource to future demand, considering the county land use plans, the community's priorities, climate change impacts, legal constraints, et cetera. Um, an example, would be so a future development for example have um, non-potable irrigation needs uh, the plan says that should be primarily met with by recycled water not by potable groundwater yeah um, the plan may also prescribe that um, supply for new development should not be served by that underlying aquifer for groundwater for example you know you you household may uh, may not necessarily be served by the groundwaters underlying that neighborhood you leave you live in Honokawai you're served by our system, the county system, but your water in that case is actually coming from Lanya Popo. So, so water supply for a new housing development may have to come from an adjacent watershed or a mix of groundwater, surface water, or recycled water. So when Sea Worm um, made, a term, made a determination that there isn't sufficient yield in certain aquifers to support plant growth, um, they actually ignored this fact and the resource distribution that is really a key strategy in the water use land plan, you know, how, how to properly allocate uh, water to land uses and to plant growth. And, and this plan is, is a guidance document, yeah, so it doesn't necessarily substitute designation where, where that is warranted, but the plan should sure. guide the designation decision. Yeah, absolutely. And the, so the plan was adopted in um, Feb uh, by County Council in February this year, and um, but at that same time, yeah, see, we're Kind of fast track designation before allowing that plan to be heard uh, by the commission. Sure, well, you know, and and like you said, I mean, the county had a, a plan for this. What was the thinking behind Sea Worm jumping in, involved, and almost kind of stepping on the county's toes in a sense? You know, what? Why now? Why did they pick uh, this recent time to to get involved in this issue? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a good response to that, but, um, you know, um, as I mentioned before, I mean, we were definitely, you know, concerned with um, climate crisis, the changes in rainfall, decreased rainfall and recharge. So um, I think that there's still, you know, that we still have the tools to, to address the different challenges we have, which is a bit different. There's a preferred way of doing that um, in sure. our opinion, yeah. Absolutely. Now, you know, West Maui seems to have a lot of private companies that provide the water. Why are there so many private companies doing that there? And, and has that been working out in Maui or um, should they be looking at a different way of doing things? Um, yeah, so many of these private uh, water companies, they are um, like legacy systems from the plantation era. Yeah, there was surface water or streams that, were, that uh, were diverted by Pioneer Mill, who was growing sugar and Maui land and pine, that grew uh, pineapple. And um, these former sugar and pineapple lands were have then over time been partially developed into what some folks think of as luxury agriculture subdivisions and private companies are retaining those 
the water system. So, so that has created long standing conflicts where there's insufficient water provided for Guyana uses or not sufficient water allowed to remain in, in, the, in the stream for in-stream uses. So um, in terms of water for, for households that are served by the private companies, uh, these systems, they are they're regulated by the Public Utilities Commission and uh, they're subject to the same drinking water standards as the County Safe Drinking Water Act and whatnot. So they have to ensure they provide safe water to their customers. So now um, in-stream flow standards have been adopted for all but one of the diverted streams, I believe. So, um, so the private purveyors, just like the county, have to reduce diversions, stream diversions, and they have to make sure that they have enough groundwater as backup, especially in droughts, yeah, when there's not sufficient stream flow. And they now really have to implement more aggressive uh, conservation measures that I think that they're used to in the past. Sure. No, absolutely. Now, you know, a lot of talk has been made on, on the election side of things this year about housing and, and building more housing, getting rid of regulations. But does this seaworm designation affect the development of housing in West Maui at all? You know, are we potentially going to see less development out there, meaning less uh, supply of houses for, for local residents? Um. Well, so as I mentioned before, in, in Seaworn's view, current use current uses are exceeding available supply. Yeah. So and other sure. aquifers are at risk because of decreased rainfall and recharge. So so it doesn't seem very likely there's a lot of additional source that can be accommodated. So th there's certainly um, a delay for any new source development because all the existing uses will have to be processed first. And then on top of that, your permanent application may be contested. Yeah. So say for example, an affordable housing project. Uh, proposed to develop a new water source to serve a project and if your water use in that permit application is contested then th that whole project may be subject to a contested case hearing so that could you know result in appeal and add time and expense to the applicant so i i understand there's pretty thin margins for um at least affordable housing development so so it adds you know it has a barrier and an expense but for the water department it's really not known if our new wells that are in the works will be permitted to pump as planned, or uh, if we will have a, a moratorium on issuing new meters in West Maui. We don't know. Sure. And I believe you mentioned earlier that that all of those permits pretty much are contested. Um, so it's uh, it, it sounds like that is definitely going to be a part that. of the process almost, uh, as opposed to just smooth sailing. Uh, now. You know, we talked a little bit about the differences between the, the Maui Department of Water Supply versus Sea Worm, uh, but can you go into a little bit of depth about, um, you know, what you guys favored in terms of a different approach compared to Sea Worm? Um, and if so, kind of how that would be a better approach, at least in, in your mind, and, and how we can, can do this better than, than how Sea Worm has kind of currently gone about the process. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I don't know that we can, but I, I, uh, the water department, as well as the Maui County Planning Department and the mayor, favored uh, a more collaborative effort, a collaborative approach. So um, we think the Sea Room had an option to invite water users, like all water users, um, to assess the situation and then together devise what measures we should take to ensure that we both develop new source. Uh, in a sustainable fashion and that we use um, current supply yeah, in, in a responsible way. So we do have the tools to do that. We have uh, groundwater models and, and studies. We have the in-stream flow standards adopted as guidance. So, so this is what we asked Seaworm to do, um, you know, to, to try that first. The department did commit to work with, with all the parties. Um, with the commission staff, with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, private purveyors, uh, community representatives, et cetera. So together we would uh, take action on the strategies that were adopted in the Woody Strong Plan um, already. And then, so, so literally it's balancing the water budget to not strain an individual aquifer system or stream resource to kind of do that in a collaborative fashion rather than in a regulatory fashion. And um, 
at the same and, to, and together also together continue to invest in recycled water expansion because that's really a key component to doing this we need uh really putting that at the forefront to get recycled water um, distributed to more uh, plan development to increase the water efficiency for all for the private purveyors as well as the county and also to invest in um, watershed protection and watershed restoration because that is ultimately you know the tool to address uh, climate change and decrease in rainfall and whatnot so um, so yeah I mean we, we're of course concerned over um, the same thing the decreased rainfall and recharge um, and there is definitely ways where uh, we and see we're together we could really incorporate this new continuously evolving climate models and updated recharge numbers and uh, see one can really address that by updating their sustainable yield numbers yeah so if you know so if we if we understand now that if we can't rely on the adopted sustainable yield then what needs to happen is to correct those calculations to address the climate crisis instead of putting that burden on the water purveyors through through this designation process certainly no and, and that all makes makes perfect sense so and we're glad that, that you're on the front lines fighting this so, you know we're we're really kind of wrapping up here on our show and um eva i wanted to give you an opportunity to you know is there anything that you would like to add something that we maybe haven't talked about yet or or you know anything specifically that you would like for our viewers to walk away with after watching this interview um well we're already designated <laughs> um so we should have had this talk earlier um no so i think <laughs> all you know all purveyors will struggle to meet demand um and but we're gonna have to go through the process as it's codified in the state water code but i think i mean there's still opportunity for all the parties to work together on on measures to to benefit the broader west Maui community not just looking at you know individual interests because we all benefit from responsible water use um you know improve in really upping our conservation effort um to invest in watershed protection restoration and water quality protection now yeah, because we all ultimately we all depend on the same same resource so so i really hope you know folks keep that in mind when we are in the midst of this permit objections and contested case and appeals yeah we ask ourselves is is this good for the public interest absolutely definitely definitely and and you know getting people involved in the process is is a great thing and, and just getting more and more people to understand what exactly is happening in government uh, so eva we really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today and and for all the important work that you do on maui regarding our water you know of course we wanted to, to thank the audience for joining us today on another episode of, of hawaii together I'm Ted Kafalas, standing in for Dr. Kaili Iakina. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.